games ahead of the closest one to them, and that is, of course, the Puyallup Vikings. But we have a three-way tie for second place in South Puget Sound League. Puyallup with a 13-4 and four record, and Bethel and Sumner also 13-4. Also, uh, and, and by the way, uh, Bethel and Sumner will be playing one another next Saturday. It's going to be an exciting ball game. The rest of the league is as follows. And by the way, mathematically, Jefferson still has a chance at the possibility of getting into a playoff berth. There are four playoff berths in South Puget Sound League. And uh, Bethel, Sumner, Puyallup will really have to stumble very badly in order for Jefferson to get into that playoff. But they are still a consideration. It is Jefferson 12-6, and six, Decatur 9-8. and eight. Decatur pretty well out of it now. Federal Way, 8 and 10, Rogers, 3 and 14, Lakes, 3 and 14, Clover Park, 3 and 14, and Spanaway Lake with a 2 and 16 record. Next week. Well, this is our final telecast of the high school basketball season, and we really have a dandy for you. It's the league leading and second in state. It's the Curtis Vikings, and they're taking on the Puyallup Vikings. Now, we've got some interesting developments in the South Puget Sound League. It was my pleasure to have uh, watched perhaps one of the most exciting high school basketball games played last Friday night when the Curtis Vikings visited the Sumner Spartans. They beat the Sparts by one point. 53 to 52 was that final score. And I want to tell you, Brian, the Sumner Spartans and the Curtis Vikings ran each other up and down that court all night long. I think you'd have to agree at 53 and 52. That's a pretty low scoring game. Oh, it absolutely is. But one thing uh, I can say about Curtis, and I think Curtis has done all year very well, and that is play the tough game. They played Decatur. Uh, we had that on C10 this year. Very tight game. They came away with it in the fourth quarter. Uh, again, last night, the first game with Puyallup was a one-pointer, and that's something Curtis has done all season, is come through and win the close ones. And that's why Curtis is ranked second in the state currently, Carl. It came down to the final three seconds of play, and Sumner had the ball into play from about mid court. They had a miscue. They didn't get the ball in properly, and it was all over. Had they done so and they got it to their key hitter of the evening, Lonnie McLean or Kevin Harris, they might have won that ball game by a point. What a basketball game, but that simply means we're going to have a dandy here tonight because the Puyallup Vikings have a lot going for them as well. They, on the season, their season record is 14-4, and four, but don't let that get to you because they... Uh, lost to the Curtis Vikings the first time up, but this is an arch rivalry. This goes way back to one of the other teams spoiling the other team from ending up number one in the uh, in the uh, South Puget Sound League, and maybe that's what's going to happen tonight. It's going to be a good one. Well, we do have a certainly have a great game here tonight. It's very important that Puyallup does win. Right now, Curtis does have the South Puget Sound League title wrapped up, but Puyallup right now is fighting for a berth. Uh, they're pretty much assur uh, assured a berth in the playoffs, but they want to get that better seed. They do have the berth. What what they're fighting for is the seeding. Where are they going to be? That's Either right. second, third, or fourth. Right now, if they lose to the Curtis Vikings, and if Sumner beats Bethel tonight, and that's a key game because the Bethel Braves are one game up on Sumner going in. If Sumner beats Bethel and uh, Puyallup loses to Curtis, Puyallup will definitely end up in the fourth berth. It will then be Curtis, Bethel, Sumner, Puyallup. So it's... <laughs> Everybody's yeah. waiting to see what's going to happen tonight. We're going to have a great game for you. We'll be back with the tip-off as the Battle of the Vikings will get underway right here on your very own television set. Don't go away. We'll be back right after these messages. The Old Country Deli at 128th and South Meridian features fresh cheeses and smoked meat and catering services, too. Or enjoy a leisurely meal. To be the only other team in South Puget Sound League that might defeat the Curtis Vikings. And the Curtis Vikings would like to preserve a 17-1 and one record. It's going to be a great game. We're glad you could be with us. Curtis Vikings, of course, have sewed up the South Puget Sound League. They are the champions. Kuala Vikings are looking for either third or a fourth place or even perhaps a second place. The game is underway and the ball will go out of bounds. Putting it into play will be the Puyallup Vikings. Game just underway. Carl Lambert and Brian Hulkquist in high school basketball. 
tonight before the game started, we had uh, senior parents and senior cheerleaders all were honored today. And Jerry nice King time. gets the ball into play over to Paul Eastman now. Out high over to the far side to Dennis Sweet. Baseline, Chris Jolly. Jolly looked like he might have wanted it, but didn't. Passed it off over to King. Paul Eastman. Curtis with a 2-3 zone now, not allowing the Puyallup Vikings to get inside and get a lane shot. Eastman feeds inside, up and scores. Jeff Roscoe, the 6'9 senior. And Roscoe last night scored 18 points. He's been their bread and butter man all year, and we'll see a lot of him tonight. Down court for the Curtis Vikings. We don't want to say the Vikings. That can be confusing. We've got two Vikings out there. Doug Doobie had himself a great night last night against the Sumner Spartans. I should say Friday night against the Sumner Spartans. Won the game in the last few seconds. For Indeed Curtis. he did. And Jeff Larson. Back out high to Mike Oslin. Oslin takes a long shot. And if he hits from outside like that, it's going to be a tough game. We're all tied up at 2-2. Jerry King playing his senior year. Chris Jolly couldn't handle the ball out of bounds. It'll be a turnover to the Curtis Vikings. Puyallup coming into this game tonight with a 14-4 record. Oslin gets it over to Doobie. Out high to Oslin. Bounce past Doobie, baseline, makes a bid for it, and he's cut off there. Try to get it inside, loose ball, tipped away, and up with it is Dennis Sweet for Puyallup. Down court very quickly over to Jerry King. It's tied up 2-2, 6-27 remaining in the first quarter of play. Bid for the lane, Eastman goes, no. It will not. Spencer Botter. Over to Mike Oslin. Oslin will take it down court. Jeff Larson. Inside. Botter. Botter gets the basket, and I believe he was fouled. Spencer Botter playing his senior year, six foot five. You know how much I've enjoyed saying that name? Spencer Bonter. Ki kind of rolls off the tongue, you know? Yeah, it does. Spelled B-O-N-T-E-R. Oh, B-O-N-T-E-R. Bonter. At the free throw line is Spencer Bonter. It is no good. The Vikings lead it 4-2. to two. The Curtis Vikings, that is. <laughs> And the Puyallup Vikings will bring it down court. Sweet gets it out high to Paul Eastman. Eastman back over to Sweet. Loose ball. Tipped out of bounds. And Jeff Larson oh. pointed an accusing finger at Dennis Sweet, and the official bought it. That was a close call. It could have went either way, I think. Mike Oslin will bring it down court for Curtis. They get it inside. There'll be no basket. They're going up for it and hitting was Eric Sabia. Sabia, I should say. We're going to have a good, good battle underneath the boards tonight, Carl. We have Jeff Roscoe for the Puyallup Vikings at 6'9", and we have a Eric Sabier, a 6'6", senior. And, you know, they're both over 6'5", and they're, they're, it's going to be a battle underneath the board. That foul, uh, by the way, against Roscoe. And here's an offensive foul. Coming into play now, the Puyallup Vikings will try to spot those fouls for you. Jerry King. Over to Dennis Sweet. Loose ball. And saving it is Chris Jolly. That ball was up for grabs. Jolly happened to be there, and he saved the day. Dennis Sweet. Over to Jerry King. King will dribble it around. Curtis does not give you the lane. King on the fourth shot. No good. Roscoe rebound and he gets it. Carl, that's what I was talking to you about. The battle underneath the boards. And in that particular instance, it was Jeff Roscoe getting the rebound and going up over Eric Sabier. Four and four is the score. We're all knotted up with five minutes exactly remaining in the first quarter of play. Over to Doug Doobie. Doobie. Pass. Oslin takes the long shot. No good. Rebound. Wrestled for it. Savier comes up with it. He feeds off to Jeff Larson, and Larson gets the basket. So it's a 6-4 ball game. Curtis leads it. Down court is Jerry King. King a senior, six foot even. Over to Chris Jolly. Long shot. Good. Oh, my. Dennis Sweet hitting right at the head of the key, and he dunked it. Good shooting for a 6-6 ball game. We're all tied up. Larson inside, whistle, Eric.
Eric Sabier was going for the basket. The foul will be against Eric Sabier. And that's foul number one for Sabier. 6-6 six, six the score with 4.23 now remaining first quarter of play. Down court is Dan Thurston. Over to Paul Eastman. Inside Roscoe. Roscoe triple team. Goes for the bucket. Oh, and a near hit. All the way, Larson. The feed to Doobie. Doobie up no good. Rebound fought for Eastman. Will come up with it. And he feeds over to Dennis Sweet. Thurston, back over to King, takes the shot, and he's got it. And the Puyallup Vikings lead it now, 8-6. Checking into the game, number 10, Dan Thurston for Puyallup. He's only a sophomore. He's 5'10". He's going to have a heck of a uh, high school career. Curtis, down by two. And a whistle. That foul will... Into play for Curtis. That foul will be on Chris Jolly, number 32 for Puyallup. Thank you, Mike Oslin. Over to Jeff Larson. Larson, baseline shot is good by Eric Sabier, and we're all tied up at 8-8. Three minutes, 20 seconds now. First quarter play remaining. Puyallup Eastman, Eastman Lane. And he tried to get it over to Thurston, bullet passed it. It'll be Curtis, Eastman unable to handle it. And Curtis will get the advantage. Ball into play from their own baseline. Mike Oslin. Three oh five remaining. First quarter of play. All tied up at eight eight. That is Oslin at the high post. He's being challenged by Chris Jolly. Two three zone. They do get it inside. It is up and good. Eric Sabier at low post puts it away for the two points. It's a 10-8 ball game. Curtis leads it. Jerry King. Thurston. Thurston out high to the head of the key. Throws the ball away. Jerry King unable to handle it. So Curtis will have it into play. This is where Dan Thurston there. Now, Dan's only a sophomore, and he's playing against a senior guarding him, and that's a couple of years' experience on Dan, and that can be pretty tough, and that was a sophomore mistake. He doesn't make many. Osland over to Doobie. Doobie gets it inside. This should be a basket. It is no good. Jeff Larson unable to hit. And the whistle. Oh, oh, oh. oh, and a technical. A technical on Paul Eastman. Paul Eastman was called for a foul. He turned around, and he said something to the official, and the official called a technical on him, and that's an owie. I don't like to second-guess officials, but watching that play, you can see it, you, know, you saw it on your TV set, it looked as though he stood his own ground with his hands up, and I'm wondering a lot about that call. Coming to the bench is Paul Eastman. At the free-throw line is Eric Sabier for the Curtis Vikings. This is a, a two-shot now the original foul. He got it. 11-8 the score. Curtis leading Puyallup. Sabier on his bonus shot, and then he'll get a technical. He'll shoot again. Sabier. It's, and it rimmed in and out of there. Shooting for the technical foul will be Jeff Larson. And the hard thing to swallow on a technical, they're hard to take anyway, but you lose possession of the ball as well. The shot is good. So they are 2 for 3 from the free throw line, and they will get the ball into play. Curtis will get it into play. They lead it 12-8, a four-point lead, and a timeout being called by head coach Jim Clifton for the Puyallup Vikings with the score. The Curtis Vikings leading the Puyallup Vikings 12-8. We'll be back with more high school basketball after these messages. Two minutes.
minutes, 22 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play, and the Puyallup Vikings are trailing it by four points, 12 to eight. Curtis will have the ball into play at about midcourt, following the technical foul against Paul Eastman, who was protesting uh, the original foul called against him. The uh, official who uh, threw out the technical, I think he, uh, in, I'm not trying to defend him, but what I am saying is that he doesn't want this game to get out of control. He doesn't want it to become a riot. These two teams are arch rivals. They are, and, and that's, you know, that's what refs are there for, too. But I question the call. I hate to second guess, but I'm a fan, too, so. That's a prerogative to question the call. Travel with the ball. It'll be a turnover. Doug Doobie. He did that a couple of times against the Sumner team. So he has to concentrate on handling that ball properly. If you all have with a chance to crawl right back into it, they're down by four, so they're not by a long shot out of the uh, ball game at this point. But a technical really hurts. It deflates the, uh, the character of the game as well. Dan Thurston will get it over to Corey Olson. Roscoe, Roscoe, baseline up. He'll get it. Jeff Roscoe on the basket, and it's a 12-10 ball game with a minute 45 remaining first quarter of play. Curtis over Puyallup. And he, you bet, double dribble. The official right there, and he palmed the ball. Well, big turnover there. Curtis did have a four-point advantage going into the timeout, and now Puyallup can tie the score up with a field goal here. Coming out of the lineup now for Curtis is Eric Sabier. Into the lineup is Joel Emery. Puyallup with the ball. They get it into Roscoe. Roscoe up. Got it. The little hook shot. Jeff Roscoe is on his game tonight. And we're all tied up at 12-12. That's that Jabbar patented sky hook. And he makes it look pretty. Curtis. Take a long shot. He's got it. Well, I'll tell you, Mike Oslin taking a rather low per percentage shot. But he made it. And it's a 14-12 ball game. Curtis over Puyallup. The Battle of the Vikings. Hope you're enjoying this telecast. Out high for Puyallup is Jerry King. Inside the Thurston. Vikings defensively really clog that lane up. They just don't give you that lane advantage. Joel Emery and Jeff Roscoe are teamed down at the low post. Roscoe at six foot nine and Joel Emery at six foot five. And it may be an over the back. And just as I was talking about that team up, it looks like Joel Emery maybe assessed the foul. Indeed, it was Joel Emery. And that's Emery's first personal foul of the game. Puyallup will put it into play. Thurston. Over to King. Shot not good. Rebound. Curtis. Air ball even. Down court is Mike Oslin. Inside, up, Emery. No good. Rebound, Roscoe. So Roscoe taking care of his uh, task defensively. Puyallup is down by two with 20 seconds remaining. They have the ball. A basket here will tie it up for them. Over to Thurston. They would love to get it into Jeff Roscoe. Over to Olsen. They do get it to Roscoe. Roscoe double team. Back out to Olsen. Olsen makes a bid. The basket is not good. It'll be rebounded with three seconds remaining by Mike Osland all the way down and in the long shot. Oh, no oh, good. Oh, oh. And at the quarter, the Curtis Vikings lead the Puyallup Vikings by two points. The score at the end of the first quarter of play, Curtis 14, Puyallup 12. And we'll be back with more high school basketball after these messages. There you have a look at some of the Puello Viking fans and cheerleaders. We're ready for the second quarter play to get underway now, and it's a 14 to 12 ball game. The Curtis Vikings leading the Puello Vikings. So far, pretty even. Curtis will get the ball into play at midcourt. Now, in the first quarter here, we have an interesting statistic. Jeff Roscoe, number 41 for the Puyallup Vikings, has eight of the 12 points that the Puyallup Vikings have. So he's had a very good first quarter. How was he in the foul, though? I think he's got a couple, does he not? He has... Into the baseline, Spencer Bonder. Well, he's in great shape then. As with most of the big guys that play low post, they get into foul trouble early. 
That's right. And we saw Roscoe against Bethel last week get into foul trouble. He was out for a quarter. Bethel made a big run. They put Roscoe back in, and they there was a comeback by Puyallup, but it, ran, it fell just short. So when Roscoe's out of that Puyallup lineup, it does hurt the you Puyallup can, You Vikings. can feel it. You can feel it. Spencer Bonner is at the free throw line. Got it. 15-12. Three-point lead. Curtis over Puyallup. Second quarter of play, 7.46 remaining. Bonner. Oh, no, I thought that was going to go, but it's rebounded by El Sabier, and he puts it away. 17-12, a five-point lead. Curtis over Puyallup. Dan Thurston over to Eastman. Out to King now. Again, trying to get it inside. Thurston, King, Thurston, Roscoe. Eastman, rather, check that. Thurston, Jolly. Thurston will bid the uh, baseline, comes out to Roscoe. Again, the Curtis Vikings clogging up that lane. They just don't give you the inside shot. And the pass into Roscoe is stolen. Credit Mike, Os uh, Mike Oslin with that steal for Curtis. He's going all the way to the lane and up, and it goes. A little dance around the rim of the basket, and down it went. 19-12, Curtis leading Puyallup. Seven-point lead. Eastman, Puyallup, very much in need of a basket. Thurston. King. Over to Eastman. Roscoe losing the ball, but I think he may have been fouled. Foul will be against Eric Sabier. And he will come out of the ball game, take a little rest at the bench. Into the lineup is Joel Emery. That's Sabier's second personal foul of the game. 19-12 is the score, and the Puyallup Vikings are trailing it by seven. They have the ball. They are in need of a basket. Dennis Wheat will take the shot, and it's no good. Rebound fought for. Rebound by Eastman. He goes up with it. No basket and a foul. This one away, actually, from the ball under the basket. It's a one and one situation as Jeff Roscoe will go to the free throw line. I didn't even see the official signal the number. I think that was on Emery, as if I'm not mistaken, Carl. It's a one and one nonetheless. If that is on Emery, that's his third. He did, yes, yeah, the official didn't signal on that one. Yeah, I, I was, <laughs> was looking for it and didn't see it. Anyway, at the free throw line for the Puyallup Vikings is Paul Eastman, six foot three, and he's a senior. He's got a good shot on that foul from the free throw line. What do we got at halftime today, Carl? Do we have a do we have an interview? So Paul Eastman now. Oh, check that at the free throw line for Curtis. Has given you the wrong player. That's Dennis Sweet. Very sorry about that, Mr. Sweet. Basket is good. So it's a 19-14 ball game. Curtis still with the lead. Over to Larson. Out high to Aldridge. Long shot is good. No defense against a basket like that as Mike Oslin comes up with a big two points. And Oslin is three for four from the long shots tonight, so he can't hit those 20, 30 footers. He's Chris Jolly. Hi. Over to King. Far side to Sweet. Back out to King. King loses the ball. Oh, my. Stealing it is Kevin Aldridge. For Curtis and Mike Oslin. Gets it over to Aldridge. Cross-court shot is good. Hitting is Jeff Larson. He had a hot night against the Summer Spartans as well. So it's a 23-14 ball game. Curtis over Puyallup. Five minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Second quarter of play. Official on the whistle. Be a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's going to send Jeff Roscoe to the free throw line for the Puyallup Vikings. 
And was that against Emery again? Yes. Now that that puts him in foul trouble. Yes, he has three fouls against him at least. And we didn't find out who the last foul was against. So he has at least three fouls against him. I imagine he'll be checking out here with 520 left in the second quarter. Quite a bit of time. Jeff Roscoe. Looks to post a point or two. He gets his first one. And it's 23-15, Curtis leads. Spencer Bonner into the lineup, and Joel Emery will come to the sidelines for the Curtis Vikings. Spencer Bonner. I suspicion he does have those three uh, personal. Yeah, he does have at least three. And Spencer Bonner, who checked into the game, Good. He's a great aggressive player. He's really fun to watch. 23-16. Curtis leads it. 5-15 remaining to the half. Curtis Rock. with the ball. Mike Osland. Almost losing. It was Jeff Larson. Out high to Aldridge. Larson quickly inside to Bonner. Bonner got the side of the backboard and a foul. Now the Vikings better not protest. The Puyallup team better not protest too much. Kyle Tommel going into the lineup. That foul being assessed against the uh, Jerry King, number 20. He's a senior. And that's King's second foul. You know, something about being an official, I've officiated uh, wrestling a little bit, and something about being an official, facial expressions can do a lot to an athlete. And, uh, you know, it's important for officials when you make a call not to rub it in. I'm not saying this official is doing that, but I think some of the players are thinking that. Spencer Bonner misses a pair from the free throw line. 23-16. Bonner's only one for six from the line right now. Jerry King will rebound, and that is King with it. Inside, Tommel. He got it. Kyle Tommel just into the lineup for Puyallup. He's six foot five and a junior. 23-18, Curtis leads Puyallup with 4.40 remaining. Second quarter of play. Bonner, yeah. <laughs> Spencer Bonner will do that all night on you. You bet he's two for three uh, for field goal attempts and maids, but he's only one for six from the line, so. King, over to Sweet. Jolly, back to Sweet. Again, looking to get it into Roscoe. And Roscoe's their bread and butter man on the low post position. They get it into Ty, uh, Kyle, but it's loose. Tommel unable to handle it. Scott Talcott caused that turnover. Out to Osland. Inside Bonner. Bonner bids for the lane. He tries to go up over Tommel. No good. Ball batted out and into play to Curtis. Long shot. No good. My oh my. Mike Osland looked like he might have had the range on it. And this foul is going to go against Dennis Sweet. And that's Sweet's first foul. Scott Talcott will go to the free throw line for the Curtis Vikings. Vikings lead it by seven. 25 18 the score. Curtis over Puyallup, 357. Remaining to the half. Scott Talcott is a senior, six foot three. No good. Well, uh, they've been rather cold from the free throw line tonight. On the rebound is Jerry King for the Puyallup Vikings. King to Sweet. Out to King, back over to Sweet. Sweet baseline right side on the long shot got it oh yes Curtis's whole team tonight is three for eight at the foul line 25 20 Curtis leading Puyallup Puyallup slowly ebbing their way back into a close one 325 remaining now to the half Curtis Aldridge inside Bonner <laughs> he misses he's trying to get it up and over Roscoe and that time he did to get up and over six foot nine in order to make that basket. 27 to 20 is the score. Curtis leads Puyallup. Sweet. King. King will take that long shot again. No good. Sweet rebounds inside Roscoe. And he was fouled. That foul, I believe, will be against Scott Talcott. And Jeff Roscoe will go to the free throw line for the Puyallup Vikings. 27 to 20. You can tell that Coach Don Houston for the Curtis Vikings has a lot of respect for Jeff Roscoe because he's double and triple team constantly. Curtis leads it. 2.57 remaining now to the half. Good. 27-21. Curtis leads Puyallup. Roscoe. 
his bonus shot. And 27-22 is the score. Curtis leads it. Ross goes four for four from the line tonight. Perfect from the foul line. Osland, bounce pass inside Talcott. No good. Rebound Roscoe. Down to Sweet. Sweet baseline left. Over to Jerry King. Inside Tommel. No. And he may have been fouled. That foul going against Jeff Larson. Jeff's second personal. Kyle Tommel, the six foot five junior, will be at the free throw line for the Puyallup Vikings. They're down by five, 27-22. A little bit too high off the back of the buck, uh, backboard. This will not go. Rebound being fought for, and a foul. It's going to go against Roscoe, I would say. Over the back, Spencer Bonner will go to the free throw line for Curtis. And that's his second personal, that Jeff Roscoe's second personal tonight. Well, most of the fouls being called by these two officials are under the back, under the uh, backboard, under the basket. And the action is very ferocious there. They got two big men on both teams. Now, Bonner from the line is one for six, so he hasn't been hitting. Well, he found the mark on that one. Now he's two for seven. 28-22, Curtis leads it. And this one will not go. Tommel. Bonner has down. eight points tonight. Thurston. He'll take inside. Tommel goes up and scores. Kyle Tommel on the basket, 28-24. Curtis with 2-10 remaining to the halftime has the lead. Jeff Larson takes the long shot, no good. Rebound Talcott, Talcott goes. He got it. Scott Talcott on the basket, and it's a 30-24 ball game. Curtis leads it. Loose ball, stolen away, clear down court, and up for the lay-in is Mike Oslin. Oslin can hit him far away, he lays him up good. He, he's a great athlete. 32-24, Curtis leads it. A minute 35 now remaining to the end of the second quarter of play. Over to Jerry King. Baseline, Tommel, no good. Loose ball, goes out of bounds. It'll be Puyallup's advantage. Tommel out of the lineup for Puyallup, as well as Jerry King. Paul Eastman in. Chris Jolly as well. Roscoe, baseline shot, sweet. No. And we have a collision. I do believe it's going to go against Jeff Larson, though, for Curtis. No, it's going to be Dan. No, Thurston. all right, they'll, they'll get Thurston on that. That's Thurston's first personal. 32-24, Curtis leads Puyallup with a minute 18 remaining to the half. Larson's one for one from the line so far. Jeff Larson, the six foot six senior. Well, Curtis hits it. Well, one could have expected that. And indeed, it is good. Larson tonight has six points. He'll be shooting for a seventh. 33-24. The score make it 34-24. Curtis leads it. Puyallup. And Dan Thurston. Over to Chris Jolly. Jolly playing his senior year. Out to Dan Thurston. He's a sophomore. He's going to take the shot. And it's off the front of the rim of the basket. It is not good. Rebound being batted around. And Curtis don't do the layup. Yes, indeed. You could see that one coming a mile away. And so in the final 45 seconds of play here in the second quarter, the Curtis Vikings beginning to uh, 
stretch that lead out a bit. 36-24 is the score. 12-point lead by Curtis. We're going to have Oslin on that foul right there reaching in. A little bit of frustration, I think, setting in on Puyallup. They were in this game less than a couple of minutes ago. That was Oslin's first personal. But now something that is interesting about the Puyallup Vikings, they are a comeback team. They can be down and come back, but I don't know that you would want to be down too much because Curtis has won so many close games this year. Paul Eastman, this is his free throw. And on his knees, got the pass away, Jeff Larson. <laughs> Talk about heads up basketball. Oh, yeah. Over to Mike Oslin. Loose ball, and Chris Jolly will steal it for Puyallup. Jolly was all over the court there. Gets it out to Thurston, out high. 17 seconds. Inside, Eastman will get the shot. It's good, and he may have been fouled. Basket is good, and it is a foul against Scott Talcott. At the free throw at the uh, free throw line is Paul Eastman. 36-26, a 10-point lead. Curtis over Puyallup. 13 seconds remaining to the half. Good. Thirty-six twenty-seven. And Curtis with the ball into play. Under 10 seconds now. Inside, Bonner. Bonner is bothered, and he doesn't get the shot, but he might it. have had uh, Chris Jolly all over his back on that play. I think they're going to call it a jump. Well, so Puyallup will have the advantage. No more jump ball in high school. Nope, after the opening tip-off, it's every other one. Oh, yeah. the mid -court. Can you believe it? I don't know if you saw that or not. I don't know if we had it, but from mid court, hitting was <laughs> incredibly sophomore. Dan Thurston, a five foot ten sophomore for the Puyallup Vikings, is going to send them to the locker room with a spectacular basket. And so at the end of the first half of play, the Curtis Vikings leading the Puyallup Vikings. The score, 36-29, and we'll be back with more high school basketball after these messages. Well, we certainly have a great basketball game going here today, and uh, we have a special guest with us at halftime. As a matter of fact, an old friend, and the mayor of Puyallup is visiting with us, Mr. Ron Crow. Ron, welcome to our broadcast. Thank you, Carl. Really is a great ball game tonight, isn't it? Indeed it is, and the Puyallup Vikings, even though they're down by seven points, still very much in this one. Yeah, that was such a great shot by uh, sophomore Danny Thurston just before the half that I have to feel it's going to be a great inspiration to the Vikings, and they'll be right back at them in the second half. Well, did you get message that uh, on the last telecast I did that we mentioned we went to the Kiwanis and spoke to them about the future of high school, and that I made the comment that you actually picked up my ticket and paid for it? <laughs> Uh, I did, Carl. Uh, first <laughs> I uh, appreciate that. And by the way, you did a great job with that Qantas program. Oh, thank you very much. It was my pleasure indeed. Well, listen, Ron, why don't you tell us a little bit about your insurance company and what else we can look for in the city of Puyallup? Well, thank you. Yeah, I uh, appreciate the chance for a commercial. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I have been uh, insurance business in Puyallup for about 22 years in, uh, in life and health insurance. And uh, also currently, the, like you say, the mayor of Puyallup. And that's a part-time position. But, uh, boy, uh, this is really rare. You give me a free commercial. I appreciate it. I was just overwhelmed by your buying my lunch. So I'm <laughs> just paying it back. I may do it again. You may. <laughs> you, anytime you want to do that, I'll tell you. Well, I uh, imagine that the uh, Puyallup Vikings getting into a playoff situation is, is not really old hat around here, but it is something that they do with a lot of frequency. And we can expect that the uh, city of Puyallup will be backing them up into their playoffs. Well, you bet we will. It's really a scrappy Puyallup team. I don't think they quite have the talent of uh, last year's ball club, but, uh, you know, anything can happen in the 
playoffs, and uh, all four of the Puget Sound League teams, frankly, are real good, and uh, Puyallup just might surprise somebody, especially the great center like Jeff Roscoe. I'd like to be the first to tell you, and I will be the first to tell you, make a, an announcement that I have uh, contracted and reached an agreement with Radio KAMT in Tacoma to carry live and direct the playoff games in the uh, West Central uh, District playoffs. And certainly, uh, Puyallup is going to be in there, and we'll be bringing those games live and direct. Well, that's great to hear, because a lot of the fans that can't get to the game uh, will love to hear that, Carl. That's yeah. good news. They can tune us in at 1360 on KAMT Tacoma. We'll be starting our coverage on Thursday, the uh, 20th of February. We'll be at the Auburn site, and uh, whoever South Puget Sound League 3 is, is the team that we'll be covering. We know that uh, the Lincoln Apes of Tacoma will be the other team from the Narrows League. So it's going to be an exciting, and we ask you to watch the uh, Tacoma News Tribune and the Pierce County Herald for our broadcast times. And we will be on KAMT 1360. Great. Be sure to bring lots of good luck to those Piala Vikings. Like, yeah, we'll do that, right? do, Carl. Well, are you enjoying the ball game? Really, uh, you know, Curtis is such an experienced, uh, polished, mature ball club, and they probably have the uh, best pair of forwards in the state, I think, in uh, Jeff Larson and Spencer Bonner, and uh, it would sure be great to see uh, Piala make a good comeback in the second half and pull this one out. Well, you know, Ron, last Friday night, the Sumner Spartans gave Curtis the scare of their life, I think. 53-52 was that final score, and they ran those Curtis Vikings up and down that court all night long. And I want you to know that the Sumner Spartans did the Puyallup Vikings a little favor. They kind of tired them out of it. Yeah, that's great. Sumner has sure had a great year, and uh, like you say, they easily could have won that game last night, and uh, they kind of got Curtis, though, I think a little extra fired up for Puyallup tonight. So uh, uh, we're looking for a great second half, though. I just have that feeling Puyallup's going to pull this one out. Ron, I want to thank you very much for visiting our broadcast area. It's always a pleasure to see you, old friend. And uh, thank you for your support of these telecasts. It's greatly appreciated. Well, I appreciate it too, Carl. And look for lots of free lunches from me. <laughs> you got a deal. Ron Crow, Mayor of Puyallup. Thanks a lot, Ron. And we'll be back with more high school basketball after these messages. There you see the score. The Curtis Vikings leading the Puyallup Vikings 36-29. Pretty much their ball game in the first half of play, but you cannot count Puyallup out. Here are the stats for the first half. For the Puyallup Vikings, we have Roscoe leading scorer for Puyallup with 12 points, followed by Eastman with five. King and Tom will each have four. Thurston, two. For Curtis, leading scorer is Austin with 10. Uh, Bonter has eight. Larson, seven. Talcott, two. And Doobie, two. Game underway now. The Curtis Vikings will have the ball into play. They lead it 36-29. Over to Doobie. Inside. Savier gets the basket. Emery for Curtis, the only person really in foul trouble with three fouls at the half. 38-29 now, Curtis leads it. Jerry King goes all the way for the layup and misses. He may have been fouled. If it is a foul, it'll be against Jeff Larson. Well, make it against Jerry King himself. And that is King's third personal. Offensive charge will be the call. Curtis is starting to get some guys with some foul trouble. Mike Oslin. Out high to Doobie. Far side, Larson. Loose ball. Savier, uh, Spencer Botter, rather, to the basket. He gets the score. Spencer Botter for two. And it's 40 29. Bonner has 10 points on the night. Eastman. Inside Roscoe. He'll go up and over and miss. Leaping rebound, Mike Oslin. The feed. Savier, Spencer Botter. That's Eric Xavier with the ball, and now he gets it out high to Doobie. Oslin. <laughs> oh, my. What a series of uh, name-calling everybody but the right ball handler. We'll get back on track here. Dennis Sweet inside Roscoe, and he has a shot rejected by Eric Xavier. <laughs> Puyallup will have the ball into play. Paul Eastman out of the lineup and Dan Thurston 
into the lineup. Chris Jolly gets it into play to Jerry King. Thurston, the one who made that spectacular half-court shot with no time left on the clock to end the, half of the first half. Thurston over to Jerry King. Shot is, oh, it rimmed in and out. And at the battle of the backboards, Sabier comes up the winner. Mike Oslin for Curtis. They lead it 40-29. Out high to Doug Duby. Larson, no good. Sabier gets it out high to Mike Oslin. Baseline shot is good. Jeff Larson. Curtis did score there, but I'll tell you, number 32, Chris Jolly, the 5'11 senior for Puyallup, is all over the floor. 42-29 now. Curtis leads Puyallup. Thurston. Jolly inside, and the basket is good by Jerry King. Well played. Good teamwork. 42-31 now. Curtis leads Puyallup. And Mike Oslin will bring it down court. Bonter. Oh, my. He, he wasn't even covered. He was wide open in the low post. 44-31. And we have a timeout being called by head coach Jim Clifton for the Puyallup Vikings. He's going to talk to him in a little bit. The score with 5-17 remaining in the third quarter of play. Curtis, 44. Puyallup, 31. And we'll be back after these messages. Ron Play resumes. The shot is good. And we can credit with the basket. Chris Jolly, 44-33. Five minutes exactly remaining in the third quarter of play. And Curtis leads it. They also have the ball. Doug Duby. Over to Oslin. Whistle. Jeff Larson was handling the ball. It'll be a turnover. Maybe we'll see Thurston try for a full quarter right here. 